Thank you, Vairok. Uh, so the scoliosis is basically not for the occasional spine surgeons. Uh, they should ideally be done, you know, uh, who are regular uh, spine surgeons. Uh, so uh, it's a big topic and I will try to uh, tell you the things which we are doing to minimize complications and optimize outcome. So you should be able to understand the disease. There are various types of scoliosis. Not ev every case is similar. Uh, you have to plan your management thoroughly. You have to perform your plan accordingly. You have to avoid the complication and you have to assess the outcomes also. So don't just do it, do it right. And we know we operate because the primary aim remains to uh, halt the progression of the deformity. We want to improve the cardiorespiratory reserve. We want to improve the harmony. So there are various terms, harmony, balance, uh, alignment. Uh, cosmetic correction is, is again a big, con big concern. It is not just a cosmetic correction. We wish to achieve a harmoniously balanced spine and it may not be necessarily a, a straight spine and if an early onset scoliosis, if they are not treated, they can be fatal also. And there is a small but definite risk of neurological deficit in these uh, population and they cannot be entirely pre preempted even with the due precautions. So the bracing, we should not forget, bracing forms an important part of the management of scoliosis. Not every scoliosis is an operative case. Uh, preparing for surgery, you have to prepare them preoperatively with protein supplements, iron supplements, uh, calcium, vitamin D supplements, correct the underweight, even the overweight also, assess their pulmonary function, improve their cardiorespiratory reserve. Uh, we use even yoga also. We have a yoga center at, a, at AIMS uh, where we, we tell them the deep respiratory exercises. Uh, we do, you have to do the proper counseling of the patients, explain the risk, explain the surgical goals. So we have this AIMS checklist now. The checklist, they are becoming uh, very important now. We, uh, we So we have everything like, you know, the preoperative checklist, the uh, patient before entering the theater, during the theater, after the theater, before discharge. So we have everything as a checklist there. So we are also following the enhanced recovery pathways for these patients. So like, you know, the small, small things uh, uh, we have published for the, the lumbar fusions and now we are going to publish it for the scoliosis also, you know, like giving chewing gums in the post-op period. Uh, they enhance the gastric juice secretion and early bowel mobility, giving preoperative glucose infusions, giving preoperative gabapentin. So there is a whole, you know, uh, uh, healthcare pathways which we follow. Uh, we also do the routine testing. The testing should be complete. Uh, we uh, every operative case in our hand goes undergoes MRI and the NCCT. Uh, it depends upon uh, person to person. The MRI is necessary in uh, especially in certain situation in AIS like left sided thoracic curves, atypical curves, history of back pain, history of headaches, abnormal neurological examination. Need for surgery depends upon how big is the curve and how big it uh, it can get in in, in the in future. So uh, one has to be also aware of various anesthetic protocols and the challenges uh, while doing the scoliosis surgeries. And we um, and I will recommend to read uh, this paper, which we, in which we have covered the uh, the essential for orthopedic surgeons. When you are doing surgery, you have to consider all these factors. You know your uh, what part of the spine you are going to fuse, what should be your levels, what implants you are going to use, what correction maneuvers you uh, you are going to use. Uh, these patients, they also have, we have sh uh, seen that they also have some coagulation abnormalities and there are certain, you know, especially in congenital ones, you have to be very careful about their bleeding profiles as well. Uh, you have to use a classification for this thing. We need classifications because you need to assess your outcomes and the, uh, these are very uh, helpful. Hello gravity traction, again, uh, in very grotesque deformity, especially with cardiopulmonary reservoirs low, yeah, we use these hello gravity traction in these patients preoperatively. Uh, I'm not going to detail of these uh, fusion levels, uh, but you must be careful, you know, that we have published this, that there are significant variation in the number of the vertebrae, so you should be careful when you're talking about the AIS, this thing. EOS is a new imaging tool which has come up and it has changed significantly are this thing. We look at the each and individual vertebral rotation from this thing and it changes our management uh, drastically in many of the cases. So just this thing, you go for mostly, mostly the posterior approach. We use all pedicle screw construct. We use hooks at the top. We prefer cobalt chromium for AIS. We use uniaxial screws around the apex, polyaxial screws uh, away from the apex. We use the posterior column osteotomies. I don't do uh, VCR or uh, PSOs for, uh, for AIS. Uh, then um, I'm skipping the video for the lack of time. Uh, Intraoperative neuromonitoring is a must for this thing. We can use the navigated pedicle screw replacement, ultrasonic blood scalpel. Neuromonitoring, we use the multi-model, including the dynamic uh, spinal cord mapping we use. Uh, we use the trans uh, uh, myogenic uh, spinal cord uh, stimulation as well. Uh, you have to follow the checklist. Uh, you, in, in case of you know, any loss, uh, you have to maintain the coordination with your uh, anesthetist, uh, improve BP and all those things. 
Use freely navigation if you have navigation, it is coming up a big way, including the robotic assistant particular replacement is, is coming a big way. 3D printing is again a very useful tool to uh, minimize complication and outcome. We, are, we have uh, published this thing uh, regarding the 3D printed jigs, they are also useful. Intraoperative blood loss, tranexamic acid, we are also, uh, uh, you know, the raw time is coming up a big way and the, uh, uh, the optimizing the surgical duration is key. In, in, in spine surgery, time is blood. You have to devise your innovative surgical techniques for specific uh, purposes, even for the modified, uh, you know, the severe deformities. You should be aware of you know, using all these techniques. Uh, like this is the, just to show you that the extra particular uh, derotation, this is coming up uh, again a big way to uh, selective thoracic fusions. Uh, outcomes you have to assess, we have uh, ASIC app available, uh, you know, which, in which we give different questionnaires to the patient and we follow them with this thing. Uh, again, you have to keep on assessing plastic surgery coordination is also very essential if you are a, if you are a big uh, scoliosis uh, center. Gate analysis again coming up, artificial intelligence is coming up a big way. Uh, again, I'm not going to detail. Uh, we are working on all these parameters to maximize the outcomes. And recently, we have got the grant for 85 lakh rupees from ICMR. And this project has already started us to, you know, to minimize the complication in this thing. So we are using, uh, you know, uh, more and more methods, but the important thing is not to forget about the human touch in these patients, which I call true AI, the augmented intelligence. Thank you.